Hello everyone, it's LeBeau from LeBeau's LeBlog. Today, we're answering the eternal question. What the hell happened to Sean Young? She's worked with some very talented filmmakers and starred opposite A-list leading men like Kevin Costner and Harrison Ford. For a time, it seemed like she might be a major movie star, but that never happened. So you have to wonder, why not? Before she came to Hollywood, Sean Young worked as a model and studied ballet in New York. In 1980, she made her movie debut in the Merchant Ivory production, Jane Austen in Manhattan. Young later said, Thank God the character was a space cadet, because I knew nothing. Director Steven Spielberg seemed to agree with that assessment. He auditioned Sean Young for the role of Marion Ravenwood in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Steven flew me out to L.A. twice to test for that. I was very, very close. And I tested with Tom Selleck. Hello, Marion. Spielberg said that Young was too green. That didn't prevent Sean Young from being cast as Harold Ramis' love interest in the Bill Murray comedy Stripes. Ivan Reitman said he cast Young for her look and for her sweetness, which he felt would complement Ramis on screen. Young's next movie role was the one she will definitely be remembered for. She played the replicant Harrison Ford falls in love with in Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. The movie was loosely based on Philip K. Dick's novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Blade Runner is set in the far-off dystopian future of Los Angeles in 2019. Ridley Scott said he cast Sean Young for her classic beauty. On screen, Harrison Ford and Sean Young had amazing chemistry. They were equally explosive off-screen in that they did not get along. Tension between the co-stars was so high, the film crew jokingly referred to the couple's big scene together as the hate scene. Sean has been thrown against the wall, and after five, six, seven takes of this, she's like, I mean, she's trembling. And they call lunch, and everybody just walked away. Nobody came over to say, how you doing? Um, you know, she was just left there. Unfortunately, Blade Runner was ahead of its time. Today, it's rightly regarded as a science fiction classic, but when it was released in 1982, it opened to mixed reviews and ambivalent audiences. In fact, Blade Runner performed so poorly at the box office that it was outgrossed by the other movie featuring Sean Young that summer. Young Doctors in Love was a soap opera satire starring TV's Michael McKean. Gary Marshall's goofy medical comedy proved to be a modest hit at the box office. Its $30 million take was enough to make it the 23rd highest grossing movie of 1982. By comparison, Blade Runner ranked 27th with a gross of $27.5 million. In Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend, Young played a scientist who discovers an adorable dinosaur. Co-star William Catt was frustrated by the mechanical dinos. It was a love-hate relationship working with those things, he said. When they worked, it was fantastic, but when they didn't, it meant long hours of sitting around in the blistering Ivory Coast heat. You wanted to chop the creatures up into tiny pieces. Reportedly, Catt was equally frustrated by his co-star. And then the director said, you know what, you can't keep making fun of him like that. And I was like... Oh, right, okay. One crew member on the movie described Sean Young's on-set behavior. She was awfully full of herself. In 110 degree weather, after two weeks of rehearsal, she'd ask the director, what's my motivation? And she'd play her goddamn flute till we were ready to strangle her. Sean Young returned to science fiction in David Lynch's big screen adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic novel, Dune. Unlike Blade Runner, Dune was not an underappreciated masterpiece. Producer Dino De Laurentiis had secured the right to adapt Herbert's sequels to Dune. Lynch says he started writing a script for Dune Messiah, but those plans were scrapped after the lackluster performance of the first movie. Sean Young followed 
Dune with a couple of TV parts, and then returned to the big screen for the sexy thriller No Way Out. The movie starred Kevin Costner hot off of The Untouchables, but Sean Young was not impressed. She said Costner was an excellent businessman and an average actor. On the upside, No Way Out was a hit with critics and did reasonably well at the box office. That same year, Sean Young appeared in Oliver Stone's drama, Wall Street. Once again, there were problems on the set. The issue started with casting. Daryl Hannah played Charlie Sheen's love interest in the movie, but she had trouble relating to her character's materialistic behavior. Sean Young had no such issues, and she took every opportunity to lobby Stone for the lead role. Stone later admitted that Sean Young would have been better for the part, but his pride got in the way. According to Stone, Sean felt more and more encouraged to lobby for the role, even though we were already shooting. It got to a place where I said, I've had enough, so we let her go. She tried to leave with some of the clothes from the movie, and we had a very tough producer who got the clothes back. Then he had the drivers take me to the bus station and put me on a bus. They weren't even going to give me a driver to take me back to New York, right? Just to, just to, uh, you know. There was also no love lost between Sean Young and Charlie Sheen. Rumor has it that Sheen stuck a very vulgar note on Young's back during filming. The note did not say kick me. He was on the phone to his girlfriend. He was leaving a message for her. And I walked up and went, ooh, baby, baby, baby. Ooh, I love you, I love you. You know, and then walked off, right? Well, I thought that was pretty funny. That just cracked me right up, you know. Well, apparently it didn't crack him up. In 1988, Sean Young co-starred with James Woods in the drama The Boost. They played a married couple who falls on hard times when they both become addicted to cocaine. The Boost didn't make much of an impression when it was released. Since then, it has largely been forgotten. If you remember it at all, it's probably for the behind-the-scenes drama between Young and Woods. Sean came up to James Woods and said, you're going to fall in love with me by the time this film is over. And uh, for his part, Woods apparently said to her, you're going to be lucky if I don't kill you. It's hard to figure out exactly what went down between them. There were rumors of an affair, which both actors have denied. But in 1989, Woods and his then fiance Sarah Owen filed a $2 million lawsuit against Sean Young, claiming that, among other things, she left headless baby dolls outside of their doorstep. The case was settled out of court. Years later, Sean Young told Entertainment Weekly, it boils down to two people plotting to set me up and to make me look like I was a crazy person, partially because of their own mental illness, partially because of revenge. By that point, Woods had married and divorced Sarah Owen, and she had accused him of spousal abuse. He replied, I love and admire Sean, and she's actually half right. Regardless of who was at fault, the entire ordeal hurt Sean Young's career. Rumors swirled, making Young out to be a crazy, spurned lover, like something out of Fatal Attraction. One urban legend, which has been denied by both Young and Woods, was that she glued his private parts to his leg while he was asleep. The other story that just completely left me speechless was a story that involved super glue. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that in any way, shape, or form. Even if most of it was untrue, the public perception was that Sean Young was a loon. At this point in her career, what Sean Young needed was a big ol' hit. And she almost had one. In fact, Sean Young was this close to starring in the biggest hit of 1989. You see, she was originally cast to play Vicki Vale in Batman. Now I know what you're saying, LeBeau. I've seen Batman a hundred times, and Vicki Vale was played by Kim Basinger. Well, as it turns out, Sean Young was originally cast in the role, and then she had an accident while filming an equestrian scene. The injury was severe enough that she wasn't going to be able to continue filming. So Sean Young had to drop out of Batman, and instead the part was recast at the last minute with Kim Basinger. If you've seen the movie, you might not remember Kim Basinger ever riding a horse. 
That's because the scene that Sean Young got her injury practicing never actually made it into the movie. That was the turning point in my career where it, that didn't happen. Instead, Sean Young appeared in the comedy Cousins, which was directed by Joel Schumacher, who ironically would go on to direct two of the Batman movies. Schumacher says he was warned against casting Sean Young. You may remember from my earlier video on Val Kilmer that Joel Schumacher didn't have the nicest things to say about his leading man. However, he was a little more diplomatic when talking about Sean Young, who he genuinely says he enjoyed working with. Sean is an artist, and she doesn't know how to monitor herself. She will pour out her emotional roadmap of the day to you, and it can be quite frightening. Shortly after having lost her part in Batman, Sean Young was fired from Warren Beatty's Dick Tracy. The official reason was that she did not seem maternal enough for the role of Tess Trueheart. However, Sean Young claims she was fired for refusing the advances of the movie's star and director. Warren Beatty denies the accusations. Young would go on to describe Beatty as impossibly self-centered, more vain than any woman I've ever met, and obsessed with sex. She claimed that she shocked and annoyed Beatty by admitting she had never seen any of his movies except for Splendor in the Grass, which she misidentified as Tender in the Grass. Young summed up her firing by saying she made Beatty look bad. I made him look too old and didn't respond to his endless hitting on me. One day he said to me on the set, When I get too old, I'll just direct. I turned to him and said, Oh really? And when will that be? Okay, funny, but maybe not the sort of thing you say to your boss. Young also filmed scenes for two different Woody Allen movies. In both cases, Allen cut Young's scene from the final movie. But according to Sean Young, Allen wrote her a letter saying not to feel bad about it. Then in 1990, Young appeared opposite Nicolas Cage and Tommy Lee Jones in the movie Firebirds. You probably don't remember this one. Firebirds really wanted to be Top Gun. Say what you will about Sean Young, she never disappoints when it comes to dishing about her co-stars. She described Nicolas Cage as a really good actor who's not very generous or good unless he can be weird in the part. The director of Firebirds liked working with Sean Young. He said, I can't praise her too highly. She's ruthlessly honest with everyone around her to the point of being blunt. She tends not to filter her thoughts. Some people might see that as being unsubtle or tactless, but there's an inbuilt honesty and integrity there. She doesn't try to hide her emotions. She needs personal attention, involvement in every element of production, and constant reinforcement of her belief in herself. I think this movie may have brought her through something she needed to get through, both physically and mentally. Young, Young also appeared in the neo-noir thriller a Kiss Before Dying. She played a dual role as wealthy twins who are pursued by a murderous social climber played by Matt Dillon. Her performance in the movie won her two Golden Raspberry Awards. One for each of the twins. It's probably pretty clear that at this point, Sean Young's career isn't going the way she would like it to go. But there's hope. She may have lost her part in Batman, but the sequel, Batman Returns, had an even juicier part, the role of Catwoman, and Sean Young figured she was a shoe-in to at least get an audition. Unfortunately, Tim Burton refused to see her. So, Sean Young showed up at Warner Brothers Studios in a homemade Catwoman costume and demanded to be seen by Tim Burton. The story goes that he was so scared that he hid under his desk in his office. When that didn't work, she appeared in her homemade Catwoman costume on the Joan Rivers show and once again pleaded Burton for the job. Sean Young later said, I don't know who got the idea that I wasn't right for the part, but you know, and I know, I'm exceedingly right for the part, and I don't know what this bullshit is. The fact that I made them see me, that aggressiveness on my part, was just not allowed for women to do. If a guy had done that, if Jim Carrey had done that, if Sean Penn had done that, 
It would have been, ah ha, what balls. But for me, it totally backfired. Why do you have this terrible reputation that you're crazy I think, and dangerous? I think you just can't <laughs> work with people who are, A, either dishonest in any way, or who aren't strong. Following the Catwoman debacle, Sean Young retreated from Hollywood to set up shop in Arizona. She still worked, but her career suffered. Young later said she regretted leaving. I should have stood my ground and fought. If you're not there to stand up for yourself, the rumor turns into a monster. I may have perceived it as self-preservation, but it had the effect of career derailment. During this time, Sean Young did appear in a couple of movies. She was part of the ensemble cast for the farce Once Upon a Crime, and she also starred opposite Patrick Bergen in the erotic thriller Love Crimes. Love Crimes was produced by Miramax. So, Sean Young had a run-in with Harvey Weinstein. According to Young, Weinstein exposed himself to her. She said he was trying to shock her, but it didn't work. My basic response was, You know, Harvey, I don't really think you should be pulling that thing out. It's not very pretty. Then she says she left and never had a meeting with the guy again. Young points to this as another moment where she stood up for herself and Hollywood acted like she was the one who was crazy. Around this time, Young was still appearing in movies, but most of them weren't especially well-known or big releases. She appeared in Gus Van Sant's Even Cowboys Get the Blues and Carl Reiner's Basic Instinct spoof, Fatal Instinct. Reiner is another director who had nice things to say about Sean Young. He said he was apprehensive when he first met her, and he said to her, You're perfect for the role, but you're going to drive me crazy. And then I found out it was all a fairy tale. She's a very gifted comedian and an actress. In, in 1994, Sean Young appeared in the second largest hit of her career. It was a little movie no one expected much from. It starred Jim Carrey when he was best known for TV's In Living Color. The movie was the first Ace Ventura. On the one hand, it was a big hit for Sean Young, which is great. On the other... It made a huge star out of Jim Carrey, and you pretty much forgot about anyone else who was in the movie. However, the success of Ace Ventura got Young cast in another goofy comedic role. This time, she starred opposite Tim Daly in Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde. Daly played a brilliant scientist in a take on the old Dr. Jekyll story, but instead of turning into a monstrous raging id he turns into sean young since 1995 sean young has appeared in a steady stream of independent movies direct-to-video releases tv movies she played mina suvari's mom in the dark cheerleader comedy sugar and spice she's been on tv shows like one tree hill Young had a background in ballet and says she's a pretty competent tap dancer. So she tried to get herself cast on the hit reality show Dancing with the Stars. When that show rejected her, Young applied for and was cast on a different reality show. Skating with the Stars seemed like it could be a big hit. Unfortunately, Sean Young wiped out and was eliminated from the show early. In 2011, Sean Young appeared in another reality TV show. This one was VH1 series Celebrity Rehab. Young hated doing the show. She says it was the least fun thing she ever did. But for a time, it did help her quit drinking, and she said that she was paid a lot of money. In 2008, Sean Young was escorted out of the Director's Guild Awards for heckling some of the winners. She reportedly began yelling in French as Marianne Cotillard took the stage. Then she had another outburst during a video clip of the George Clooney movie, Michael Clayton. Finally, while the director of The Diving Bell and the Butterfly was giving his accepted speech, Sean Young yelled out, Get on with it and move on. Sean Young has admitted that she was very drunk that night. But four years later, when she was arrested at an Oscars after party, she says she was sober. She got into a disagreement with a security guard at the Hollywood and Highland Theater, where the governor's ball was underway. According to tabloids, Young actually slapped the security guard, which led to her arrest. 
In 2018, Sean Young was hired to make her directorial debut on a low-budget comedy called Charlie Boy. The producer was himself a recovering alcoholic, and he says he wanted to help Sean Young out by giving her a second chance. Unfortunately, things didn't work out. According to the producer of Charlie Boy, Young was showing up for work drunk. Eventually, Sean Young was fired from the movie. She says she had some belongings in the offices of the production and that she reached out to be able to go pick them up. One night, Sean Young and her son are caught on video loading up a van. Among the items that they took from the production offices were two MacBooks, valued at $5,000 each. The movie's producers say they tried to reach Sean Young immediately and were unable to do so, so they called the NYPD, and for a time, Sean Young was wanted for questioning. In the end, the computers were returned, and Young says it was all a big misunderstanding. So what the hell happened? How did Sean Young go from one of the most promising actresses in Hollywood to a virtual pariah? Certainly substance abuse played a role. Sean Young has talked openly about her problems with alcohol. She claims that they did not impact her work. Whether that's true or not, there was certainly a perception that it was an issue. Her outbursts at Hollywood functions certainly didn't help. She was also a victim of just plain old bad luck. The Batman accident robbed her of an excellent career opportunity. We'll never know what could have been had she played Vicki Vale. Sean Young has often claimed that she was treated unfairly, and she's not wrong. A lot of the behaviors that were held against her would have been lauded if they had come from an actor, whereas a male movie star would have been praised for his ambition and go get him attitude, those attributes were held against Sean Young. In a lot of ways, she was her own worst enemy. However, there's also a narrative here in which she was a pioneer for women's rights and what would eventually become the Me Too movement. While it hurt her career, she did stand up to some powerful men in Hollywood. I hope that you enjoyed our look back at the astounding career of Sean Young, and I look forward to bringing you more videos in the What the Hell Happens series.